In this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week of May 5th. We got an eclectic bunch this week. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week of May 5th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out a weekly article that analyzes the hottest selling comic books based on movement and eBay sales data. So like I do on most Mondays, it's always really fun to take a look at this article with you guys week to week and see what's trending in the market. But before I get into the books for today, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel. And also I am currently doing my 5,000 subscriber giveaway. And at the time of recording this video, I am only 50 15 subscribers away from hitting that milestone. So definitely, if you are not subscribed to the channel, hook me up, support it, and also navigate over to that 5,000 subscriber giveaway video so that you can get a chance to win one of those books. All right, with that said, uh, let's take a look at the picks for today in this Go Collect article. And for those who don't know, this article is always written by Matt Tuck, who is a great contributor to Go, Go Collect. Highly recommend that you check his work out. Uh, I will put a link into the description uh, if you guys wanna do further reading, but of course, I'm gonna give you my uh, thoughts and analysis for this week's picks. So let's jump into the books here. Hottest comics uh, for five, five, 21. And like I do with uh, this list every week, I like to start here at the bottom. So let's read the number five one here, and that's gonna be Star Wars High Republic Adventures number one, one in 10 Yale Nathan ratio variant up 936 spots. So, well, that was definitely a mouthful. So what is the significance of this? Well, uh, recently, this is a very you know modern comic book here. Uh, recently, uh, Star Wars has launched, uh, I believe it's two different series uh, that are dealing within the sort of High Republic space, one of them being Star Wars The High Republic of Adventures, and this launched a series of new uh first appearances of characters uh, as they relate to the Star Wars High Republic era. This particular cover obviously features Yoda here, one of the most popular characters in all of Star Wars. And uh, in the storyline, actually Yoda does play a big significant role. In fact, he does play a significant role within context to the High Republic. Um, at least that's what they're demonstrating right now with this current run of the comic book. So uh, this particular variant right here, uh, the Nathan Yale one, I believe it's, it's, is how I pronounce it. Uh, this one has definitely heated up in these last couple of weeks. Now, GoCollect does not have uh, its numbers updated, but you can see here, May, there's a bunch of sales going on. But when I go into eBay and look for this book raw, you know, I'm seeing it sell for that, you know, $30, $35 range or so. Uh, now, I'm not really sure specifically if there's been other reasons why this particular variant has heated up recently. Uh, but I do know that these Star Wars books, you know, Star Wars Adventures and also the other High Republic series, uh, you know, the number ones of those issues, obviously very popular. We're getting a lot of first appearances of new characters, a lot of speculation that we might see these characters one day in sort of a Disney Star Wars show. So a lot of people wanting to get their hands on this book. And, you know, if you're a Yoda fan out there, uh, why not go with the cover that has uh, one of the great uh, Star Wars characters of all time? So th for that reason, Star Wars High Republic number one, uh, Nathan Yale or Yale Nathan ratio variant up 936 spots. All right, let's go on now to the fourth book here. And the fourth book is really cool. This one is Hawkeye number one up 939 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the Hawkeye series written by Kelly Thompson in 2017. And this would be just, um, known as Kate Bishop Hawkeye her first solo series or solo story, I guess you could call it. So uh, we all know that later on coming on in the end of this year, we are going to get a Disney Plus show called Hawkeye and it's going to star Jeremy Renner Hawkeye, but also it's going to star uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye, you know, Jeremy, uh, uh, Hawkeye's daughter within context to the comic book continuity. So uh, for that reason, I think a lot of the books that relate to the Kate Bishop character have been heating up recently. And uh, this one is no exception. This one right here, Hawkeye number one from the Marvel Now of 2017. This was Kate Bishop's first solo stories, first kind of ongoing series. And, you know, a very cool cover. I mean, like, you know, very iconic uh, kind of with a Hawkeye purple look there. And I, I think that this is a really cool book if you are a fan of sort of the Kate Bishop character. It definitely feels like, you know, we're going to, into this sort of young Avengers route, uh, at least, you know, to some degree within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Kate Bishop is one of those characters that, you know, people are specking on, people are excited about. And for that reason, uh, this Hawkeye number one has heated up recently. And as we dig dig into the numbers here, you're going to see 9.8s, fair market value selling around that 140 range. But you can see here, May, 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 May. So a lot of sales going on in May. Of course, this is one of those books you're not going to see uh, in lower grades. But if, if you're going to go on eBay and buy this book raw, you're looking at around that $15, $20 mark or so, at least for the time being. 
All right, let's move on now to the third pick here. And the third pick is actually uh, a book that, you know, is a, is a love-hate one here. It's Avengers Annual number 10, up 947 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first appearance of the beloved X-Men character known as Rogue. Now, uh, I know what you guys are thinking. This is one of the all-time worst covers of all time. And uh, you're 100% right about that. But that doesn't change the fact that Rogue's first appearance takes place in this book. And, you know, everybody loves Rogue. Everybody loves her character. You know, a lot of people growing up on that uh, animated uh, X-Men show in the early 90s are very fond of the Rogue character. And for that reason, you know, Avengers Annual number 10 uh, is always going to be a, a significant book because, you know, Rogue is, is a character that we all, you know, grew up loving and everything like that. So uh, it, it's also, you know, good speculation right now that we, we might get Rogue in the MCU in some kind of way. We all know that X-Men is coming, that Marvel has acquired the, the rights back to X-Men, that X Men are going to be brought onto the scene, and you know, for for a, a lot lot of people out there, there's a lot of speculation that we might see Rogue popping up in sort of like the Captain Marvel two universe. Because you know, for those who don't know, within context to the comic books and the storylines, uh, one of the ways that Rogue was able to get so powerful in terms of her ability to fly and have super strength, etc., is because she actually touched. Captain Marvel and stole a lot of her power. So uh, a lot of people thinking that, you know, in Captain Marvel 2, we might get some version of uh, Rogue showing up there. In fact, uh, you know, when I just think about it right now, uh, you, you know, with Captain Marvel being as powerful as she is, you know, that just for, for a writer's perspective, they have a lot of uh, issues with having to deal with like, well, how do we, you know, still tell a compelling story with like, without, you know, uh, having her be so powerful. So I, I think that I, I could very much see them doing the Rogue storyline in order for them to depower Captain Marvel so that they can have uh, a, a little bit uh, a more tension when she has to face uh, foes within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So Avengers Annual number 10, always a book that kind of yo-yos up and down as far as it being hot in the market. This is for, forever, will, this will be a kind of favorite collector book. But, uh, you know, as far as speculation is concerned right now, definitely a book that is always, always, always hot. All right, and as we dig into the numbers here, you're gonna see a 9.8 fair market value selling for that $1,200 range. And then there's kind of a, a big drop off because it's a sort of an 80s book, you know, where we're, we're always seeing the, the 9.8s being really, really high. And then once you get to the 9.6, uh, that, that's when the, the drop off really happens. But, you know, overall, you're not gonna to see too many CGCs on the bottom end of this. But when I look on eBay and you're looking at those lower grade books, it's gonna cost you around that sort of 75, 80, $85 mark uh, currently right now. And uh, if we ever get rogue, into the MCU, uh, who knows what this book's going to sell for. All right, let's move on now to the next book here. And the next book is a really cool one. This is Detective Comics number 400, up 949 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of a character known as Man Bat. Now, also, Go Collect notates this as being the first Batgirl and Robin team up, which you see there in the title, Batman and then Robin and Batgirl. So uh, that's kind of a, a cool little significant thing as well. But I, I think the real reason that this book has heated up recently is because of the Man Bat appearance. Now, you guys know, I am not a big DC person. So uh, th this is something where it's like, I'm not going to know too much about the Man Bat character, but I do understand, at, at least from my perspective, that the Man Bat character has some significance uh, within, you know, or, or some kind of cult following within the Batman fan space. And, and for that reason, you know, anytime you have a first appearance of a, of a villain that's going to, you know, relate to the Batman character, there's always going to be people that want to get their hands on it. And uh, in, in that sense, uh, Man Bat is one of those characters. And on top of that, there are actually, you know, I had to lean on to Matt's analysis here in the article because, you know, I'm not a big DC person, but there is currently, uh, as he described, a Man Bat series going on. So perhaps there is like a, a new sort of uh, renewed interest into this character. You know, anytime, uh, obviously, we, when we see characters in films and movies and TV shows, that's going to create a lot of popularity. But also, if we see characters going on in the current comic book runs, uh, we're also going to see a renewed interest in their first appearances. And because there is a current run going on with Man Bat, uh, that's that's going to get people uh, going towards his original first appearance, which is this one here, Detective Comics number 400. All right, let's move on now to the last book. And the last book is actually, this one is, is really cool to me. This is Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen, number three, up 956 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first full appearance of the character known as Punchline. Now, I don't know, again, 
to preface, I don't know a lot about DC, but I am very well aware of the Punchline character. She's kind of that new sort of like Harley Quinn sensation uh, that has been created recently in DC. A kind of a, a very, very cool character and with it, with from what I can tell about her, written by James Tinian, who is, of course, a very hot writer uh, belonging to the DC universe. And I actually think that Punchline is a character that is here to stay. Just as someone who, like, you know, I don't know anything about it in terms of what reading the stories and everything like that, but just as an outsider looking in, it just feels very obvious to me that there is a huge fervor for this character, that her character design is like sort of an instant iconic character design. And that, you know, when we move, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, uh, it, it feels like we're going to have DC pushing this character a lot. We're going to see Punchline in movies. We're going to see her in animated shows. And as the generations of people who grow up on Punchline uh, start to get older and older, uh, this is, this is going to be one of those books that, you know, uh, what for, for my generation, it was sort of like the Harley Quinn book that, you know, we kind of came out during the 90s and everyone was jumping on that thing because everyone loved Harley Quinn from the animated show. It feels like Punchline, they're kind of repeating that same sort of thing here with her. Uh, and I really feel like, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, this is going to be one of those really, really big modern key books, first appearance of Punchline. And, uh, you know, for me, as not someone who is a big DC collector, this would actually be a book that I personally would consider uh, getting my hands on. If I want to start collecting DC, uh, this is actually one of those books that is going to be on my list. And uh, it seems like it's uh, one of the books on a lot of people's list because this book has definitely heated up recently as that's why we're talking about it because it's the number one book on Go Collect's Hottest Comics. So uh, let's dig, dig into the numbers here. We'll see 9.8 selling fair market value for that $220 range. And you can see there's been a surge of May prices here. May, 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 May. May, May, right here. Uh, and Again, those of course are just fair market values as they relate to uh, you know the the CGC numbers. But ultimately, this is a book that you know is it, it, not a well kept secret. Like when I go onto eBay and I look for this book, I mean you're looking for that around that three figure range, uh, no matter what grade you're looking at here. It's always going to be selling around that two hundred, three hundred dollar range because you know Punchline. She seems to be a really, really popular character and one that is going to be around for many, many years to come. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Those are Go Collect's hottest comics for the week of May fifth. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, which books uh, do you have here? Which books are you going after? Definitely an eclectic list. Uh, I, I felt like it was this week where it's like we have some moderns, we have some DC, we got some Star Wars, we got some Silver Age, we got some you know current stuff. So very very interesting to me. Again, uh, I you know I, I'm I'm always trying to learn a little bit more about DC and, and trying to educate myself. Uh, but just from an outside perspective, to me, Punchline seems like a really cool character that is going to be popular for many years to come. And for that reason, I might one day uh, try to get my hands on that book. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Uh, drop me a like, comment, or subscribe. Please navigate over to my 5,000 subscriber giveaway contest if you haven't done that yet. Uh, definitely sign up if you want a chance to win one of those books, and I will see you in the next video.